morning to all of you and welcome to this next session on uh, IST workshop on research methods in educational technology. Before we proceed, let us just do a quick status check. This is what uh, we have 6357 participants who registered, but only some 4900 who submitted the first assignment. And that 4900 has now co come down to 2054 as the number of submissions for the current assignment which is the idea proposal submission. And subsequently we expect that many of you will continue to be there in the workshop and just get a quick feel of what are the exit points. The key exit point is submission of the study planning submission assignment which is uh, one week from today about a week from today and that is the point where certification is possible. And it is important to remember that not doing these intermediate assignments and directly submitting something for the study planning assignment is not good enough to earn a certificate. Okay, so, with that let us move on to quickly recap what have we done so far. So, this workshop as we saw in the first session is about ET research and the workshop is about how you solve some teaching learning problem in your class. So, that is what the idea proposal and idea planning templates that you have been working with are. Okay. So, quickly to recap what is educational technology, there are two aspects, one is the technology for education and the other is the technology of education. And right now we are focusing more on the technology of education rather than building new technologies for education. And this workshop is a journey from being an ET practitioner who teaches students and facilitates their learning to becoming an ET researcher who conducts systematic studies to get data about whether the ideas are working. And what route are we taking? Recall that we said that there are no fast lanes or shortcuts. We cannot simply listen to lectures. We have to do the activities. And finally, we have to challenge ourselves to go beyond the obvious ideas. So, some of you may recall our mentioning the theories that are underlying this workshop, because now you also have to start thinking in terms of the theories that are underlying your own work. So, the theories that are underlying are one is spiral curriculum, which basically means that we will be revisiting the same idea in greater and greater depth throughout the workshop as we proceed along with the workshop. So, as a pre-workshop submission, you submitted a beginning of an idea. As your idea proposal submission, you have worked it out in more detail. As your study planning template, you are going to work it out in further detail. And that same idea is going to go ahead and become your full fledged paper. So, that is the spiral curriculum. And the other one is active learning, which is basically saying that we have to do the activities and that is when you can get the actual benefit. Okay, so, coming to our journey at a glance. This slide may not be visible to most of you. Nevertheless, we have thought it would be a good idea to just put it so that you can get to see all the stuff in one go. So, it will be posted on Moodle and each of these rectangular boxes are the items that you are creating and these ovals are the items that we are doing in the workshop or on Moodle. So, Feb second workshop, these are the guidelines that were given to you, these are the in workshop activities that you did and these are the Moodle resources that were posted. And as a result of which uh, on Feb 2nd, the main activity that you did was evaluating your own assignment for strong paper features. Similarly, today you will be starting to fill out the study planning template proposal of your idea. And again, there will be guidelines and in workshop activities and Moodle resources which are posted to help you with the same. So, this is a slightly more detailed summary of what happened on Feb 2nd. Once again, I am not going to read this out. It is just for reference for you later on when you go back and look at what did you learn in this workshop and all that. So, we did talk about what is a research paper, how to evaluate a research paper for strength and weaknesses and we did talk about uh, how to evaluate your own idea. So, workshop slides were posted on Moodle and the videos about reading research papers 
and doing literature survey was also posted on Moodle. Okay. Similarly, there is a slide for what we are expecting to do today. Once again, you do not need to read this. This is there mostly for information for ease of recall later on beyond the workshop. Okay, so, coming to stuff that you need to pay attention to. So, the key thing is what are referees looking for? So, we saw that referees are looking for these 4 or 5 items novelty, positioning, soundness, evidence and so on. So, we looked at novelty and positioning in detail in the first session on Feb 2nd and there have been subsequent queries on this on Moodle also what is novelty, how do I do positioning, how do I find out if there is prior work and all that. So, we will take that up very briefly today before proceeding. So, what exactly is meant by novelty? So, if you look into the dictionary, the definition is the quality of being new, unique, original, innovative or unusual. So, your paper or your idea has to qualify for one of these adjectives. Okay. <coughs> So, what has to be novel or what has to be new or what has to be unique about what you are doing? So, there are three options that you can follow. One is either your problem has to be new, in which case you are asking an entirely new research question. So, one example of this could be that there is some new technology which has been invented and you are the first to carry out a study on that on its effectiveness use in the classroom. Okay. So, some of the cutting edge research work falls in this category. The other next category is the novelty in your solution. So, in this case the problem may be known, but your solution strategy is novel. So, you are solving the problem in a different way from the prior work. And in the third case your domain could be new. So, both the problem and the solution are known and have been tried in some other domain and you are adapting that solution to your own context. For example, a good example of this is the technique called uh, peer discussion which we are using in this workshop. So, it was invented in a different domain in physics education research and we have been adapting it in various other disciplines have, have been adapting that same idea and trying to see how effective is that idea in their domain. So, the key point to remember here is that this is the degree of strength to weakness of your novelty. So, it is strongest if you are able to find a novel problem and it is weak if your novelty is in the fact that okay, nobody has done it for this particular topic and I am going to do it for that topic. Okay. So, this actually leads to one of your Moodle queries which is can a non innovative strategy be developed into a strong research paper. So, the answer to that is yes, but there is a big provided there and it is provided your idea is positioned well. Okay. So, that leads us to this question of what exactly is meant by positioning. So, now if you look at the dictionary meaning of positioning, it states that it is the situation in relation with respect to others. So, how do you stand with respect to others? So, there are two things that you want to keep in mind when you do positioning, you have to do both of these. One is you have to show analysis of related prior work to bring out the gaps. So, you have to find papers that have addressed a problem similar to yours, you have to find papers that have a solution similar to yours okay. and you have to show that there is a gap which these papers have not yet addressed and also show that your solution addresses any some of these gaps. Okay. So, once again the point to remember here is as the novelty of your problem or your solution decreases, the accuracy of your positioning must increase. Okay. So, if you do not have high degree of novelty there and you do not have accurate positioning, then the chances of getting accepted is very low. Okay. So, how do we ensure accuracy of positioning, how to do accuracy of positioning. So, that brings us to this recall from what we saw in the previous session, you want to be able to explain the relation to other work clearly. Okay. 
So these were the various categories and these were the examples that we saw of what is awful positioning to what is good positioning to what is desirable positioning. Okay. So we should aim to fall in either the good, at least the good, if not the better category of positioning our work. Okay. So we should be able to compare with existing prior work and to be able to say what is it slightly different that we are doing and how much improvement we are getting in our results, what is it that that work is not able to do that our work can do and all those comparisons have to be explained in the positioning part of your work. Okay. So let us come back to a one line summary of what is a referee's job. So as I mentioned in the previous session, the referee's job is not to find reasons to accept your paper or to say that you have done a great job or pat you on the back. The referee's job is to find reasons to reject your paper. So not doing all the parts required for a paper that is novelty, positioning, soundness and evidence means that it is wasted time and effort for both of you, both you and the referee. I mean you may have done three out of these which would have taken up 75 percent of your time. Not doing the additional 20 percent is going to prove expensive both to you and to the referee. Okay. The second thing to remember is that this order is important. So even if your work is sound, it can get rejected if it is not positioned properly. Okay. So this is a very common uh, pitfall that most beginners fall into, you know, especially at PhD student stage. We feel that we have done a lot of work, we have done this experiment, we have ran there, collected that data and we have spent an entire night analyzing the data and all of that and we get completely carried away and engrossed in what work we are doing. So the work may turn out to be very sound, but it may be work that others have done before, it may, you may finally find a known result. So it could get rejected if you are not positioned the work properly. So, here is a picture to help you remember this. So what is the referee's job? Papers are submitted in this uh, funnel, okay, set of conical filters and the referee's job is to first see whether it passes the filter of novelty in the problem or in the solution. Okay. So if your paper does not pass that filter, it goes into the trash okay. and subsequently the next thing the referee is going to look at is does it pass the positioning with respect to related work and once again those which do not pass are going to exit. Then only the referee comes to looking at soundness of procedure and even the soundness of procedure is not enough. After the procedure is sound, you have to also provide the evidence which is the soundness of your evaluation. So only when all these four pieces are there and in this order will the referee be likely to recommend your paper for acceptance. Okay. And here is something to keep in mind that the typical acceptance ratio for any good or decent conference will be around 15 to 20 percent. Okay. So we have to put in the effort to make it into this 15 to 20 percent and that is what this workshop is all about. This workshop is about taking your idea and working with you to get you to this 15 to 20 percent rather than have your effort getting wasted by having to be taking one of these exits. So I will just give you a pause to catch your breath and then we will move ahead with uh, today's session and what is going to come later. Basically the entire effort is towards paper acceptance now, towards conducting a study rigorously and writing the paper in a way that the referee is, has no option but to accept your paper. So the first activity for today is a pair activity and this is called peer review of the idea proposal assignment. So all of you have submitted the idea proposal assignment and I hope many of you have brought hard copies of the assignment of your own assignment. So what you want to do is first form pairs and exchange your idea proposal assignment submission with your partner. Okay. Now 
in case you have not brought, you probably will have to explain to your partner what is it that you did. Ideally, you should have a hard copy and what you are supposed to do with your partner's submission is read your partner's answer to question 3. Question 3 was the brief description of the idea, okay, what you are going to do, what your students are going to do okay. and the partner is to answer these two questions yes or no. Are you able to understand the idea which the other guy has written in his or her proposal and second question is does the idea sound exciting to you okay. Once you have got past this step 2, then you move on to reading the answer to question 5 and see whether the gap that your partner has brought out in that answer, is it clear to you, you know, is it making sense, is it coming out clearly. Once again you do a yes or no and only after that you start talking. So, keep in mind that you do not want to discuss anything with your partner while you are doing steps 2 and 3. Once you have finished and got your answers to these questions, then you start discussing where you explain to your partner what aspects of the answers are not coming out clearly. Okay. So, the time is now 9.50, close to 9.50. So, you have up to uh, 10 o'clock to do this. Okay. So, most of you should have been done with the activity by now. So, as the others are finishing, let us let me make one announcement first. There are many queries about not being up able to upload the idea proposal assignment. So, due to whatever technical problems as they call it. So, what we will do is we will extend the deadline for those of you who had these technical problems and uh, maybe by a day or two not more than that because the next submission is also due soon enough. Okay. So, then moving on. For those of you who have completed the activity, start thinking about this. How many of you felt that, okay, there are immediately 2, 3 queries which say extend up to Monday night. That is really not on, I think. That means, you have not worked on the idea submission assignment. Okay. So, okay, we will think about that. I am not going to take any more uh, requests regarding extension of the deadline right now. Let us come back to the activity that we are doing now. So, how many of you felt that you have explained your idea well, but your partner still did not understand you know, either your idea or your gap analysis and you are sort of getting frustrated why this fellow is not understanding. Okay. So, the coordinators can quickly poll and send the response by chat, you know, how many people feel that your partner did not understand. Okay. I am getting 60 percent from somewhere else, somewhere else everybody understood, 30 participants clear with the idea, 75, 65 percent, 64 percent, 70 percent, 40 percent, 55 percent, 20 percent, 100 percent. So, 100 percent actually is whether people understood or did not understand, it does not matter. So, um, yeah, so I will just give you half a minute, 99 percent, 20 percent. Okay, so, we can stop sending the poll results and move on to the next point, which is what is the value of peer review. Okay. So, the value of peer review is that it is always our responsibility to write our paper in such a way that the reader can understand and follow it easily. Okay. So, typically we have a tendency to blame the reader saying that that fellow is not smart enough to understand what I am saying okay. and that is the most common pitfall for early researchers. Okay. So, the point to keep in mind is if your friend or colleague are is having difficulty, somebody who is friendly towards you is having difficulty in following your paper what do you think the referee is going to do with your paper. Okay, so, that is the thing that you want to keep in mind. So, whenever somebody is telling you giving you feedback saying that some aspect of your work is not clear, you must take that feedback seriously and see how to improve that. Okay. So, that is the value to writers. Every peer reviewer comment tells you what part of your paper 
you need to improve upon okay what's the payoff for the person who is giving the comments okay the payoff is every paper that you peer review is going to improve many things okay one is it might improve your knowledge of the domain second it might give you clues to prior work or related work that you were not aware of okay and third and most important it will improve your own analytical skills of being able to spot the gap being able to see whether there is novelty being able to examine an idea for soundness and that improvement in your own analytical skill will pay off when you write your own paper so that's the value of peer review so moving on now we'll continue with the activity so this is a slightly longer one it's for 20 minutes on the same idea now you want to read your partner's answer to question 6 okay which is the detailed description of the procedure and the data being collected and you want to imagine that you now have to replicate this study so some study somebody else has described and it's your job to replicate the study means use that data or use that description to carry out the study in your own class okay so what you want to look at is do you think the procedure is described in sufficient detail for you to be able to replicate do you think that the data being collected can give evidence that the idea works okay so once again after you have gone through it take 5 minutes to go through it in detail and then explain to your partner what additional information you require to replicate the procedure of the study and explain to your partner what additional data you think is required okay so i am guessing that many of you are going to feel that the answer is no okay so that's why the other two items are explain to your partner what additional information is required and explain to your partner what additional data is required okay so this activity is for 20 minutes starting at 10 we'll go up to 10:20 okay we'll reconvene at 10:20 now 